Good morning, and uh, welcome to this hour of worship. Um, when I came in first thing this morning, the heat pump was creating a wonderful warmth here, and we trust that just being in God's presence will warm our, our hearts and souls as well. Uh, welcome back to Brooke Boonstapel. We're glad you're here with us. Our call to worship comes from Isaiah 66. God says, I am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. Let's celebrate that glory together. the Lord and receive his words of greeting. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the rich love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's take time to greet our neighbors in God's love and grace. One of uh, Jesus' marvelous uh, statements in the book of John and the Gospel of John is, I am the light of the world. So in this Christmas season, uh, we celebrate that the light of the world has stepped down into our lives, uh, into our sin-broken world. Let's uh, praise Jesus for his pure light and love in our lives.
pray together. King of all the world, uh, it's amazing that you humbly came down to earth, the very earth you created, all for love's sake, you became poor. Uh, we worship you as the light of the world who alone can fill our lives with love and truth about ourselves and about you. Uh, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be pleased with our worship. Uh, we thank you for this time in a bustling season to come here, uh, to pause, to lift our eyes on the gospel message of hope and love. And we pray that um, the words that we sing, the prayers we offer, uh, would come from the depths of our hearts and that you'd be pleased with our worship, which you love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The third week of Advent is about love. Today we are going to light the candle of love. In 1 John 4, verse 7, we read, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Let us pray. Dear God, we love you because we know that you loved us first. As we light this candle, help us to love each other and tell others about the love of Jesus. Amen. And then when I was asked if I would do one of the weeks, I, got, I was given all the options of which week I wanted to do, and I said, I'll do the week of love. And it said, can you talk about a time that you experienced the love of God through the ministry of others? Um, many of you know that right now Doug is off work and can't, um, he's doing a little bit better, but he's struggling with depression right now. And we have felt love from so many people in this time of our life that we're in right now. We had, um, we've had friends who have brought our kids to church because Hendrik loves coming to church. So we've had friends who brought our kids to church one weekend when I needed to go away for a weekend. And so I was thrilled that they did that. I've had Amanda watches my kids already four days a week, but she's offered to watch my kids that one weekend when I went away so that, um, so that I could go away. I've had friends who've made us meals. I've had friends who've dropped by our house with a card, with a gift card in it, because they know the financial stress is a little bit more for us. I've had friends who give us peppermints every single morning because they know that Hendrik loves peppermints. So, so many ways that we've felt love. We've had prayers, we've had hugs, we've just had just an outpouring of love and support for our family right now in this time. And that's, for me, why church is so important and why um, I love this family that we are. And we're not perfect, but we're pretty awesome. And there's a lot of love for many people. And so thank you for that love. We appreciate it. going to invite uh, children to children's worship, uh, ages three through grade five. And uh, if you're a guest here, we always uh, have a parent take the kid to check them into the children's worship program. Uh, this is sort of a magical season for kids. Um, thinking about the Bethlehem story, uh, the angels appearing, uh, just learning about Jesus and his birth is just a marvelous thing. So let's uh, offer a prayer for the children's worship time. 
Jesus, in your life and ministry, you welcomed children to you, even when adults were pressing all around you. And for good reason, you yourself were born a little one, baby in Bethlehem. And so we thank you for your love for children, for your desire for them to grow strong and true and know the gospel, the good news that you came to bring. So bless our children's worship time, bless the worship leaders. May the kids be attentive to the stories, uh, to their time of worship. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. And we'll take our offering as the children head out uh, for our general ministry. And let's see, for safe church ministry, we're applying those principles to our life. So let's give with gratitude. Thank you, Ben. Ben Brown. It's always, uh, for me, wonderful to see children working on piano. We need that in so many worship settings. And um, I guess Ruth and uh, Joey aren't going to be here forever, so we want to encourage that uh, gift in the life of the church. So thanks, Ben. One of the habits, the uh, good habits that we as God's people have is when we're in God's presence worshiping him, recognizing his holiness and uh, our battle with sin, that it's an ongoing discipline to uh, confess, to repent, and put away sin in our lives, to die to the old self. So this is a time in our service where we have the privilege of pleading for God's grace, knowing his grace is rich and bountiful. Uh, the theme of the candle this morning, of course, is love. And so this reading from God's will picks up on that. From Matthew 22, one of the Pharisees, an expert in the law, tested Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Let's bow together in a prayer of confession. Lord, today we have lighted the Advent candle of love. We, we've sung that you came down that we may have love. We've heard a, a testimony to your love shown through your people but we confess that we haven't always reflected your great love very well. We confess that often we've loved ourselves far more than you. Our activities, our success, our reputation, our enjoyment and satisfaction. So Lord, here and now forgive us when our love for you has been feeble, distracted, and lacking. And we also confess that often we have loved ourselves far more than our neighbor. 
We confess that often we're far more focused on ourselves and our family more than neighbors. Often we don't have a passionate concern for the the needs and hopes of those around us. So Lord, forgive us when our love for neighbor has been feeble, distracted, and lacking. Have mercy on us. May Christ be fully born in us to fill us with his love. Amen. And brothers and sisters, hear these words of assurance. By faith in Jesus, our Savior, and by his blood shed on the cross, he washes away all of our sins. Before God, we are whiter than snow. Let's celebrate that with the song, As Moses Raised the Serpent Up. several uh, announcements to make before we uh, spend some time in prayer together. Uh, The first, I'm sure, as many of you have already heard, but uh, Friday, Ashley Drost uh, did undergo a C-section, and a healthy baby boy born to uh, Pat and Ashley, I think six pounds, eight ounces. Is that right, grandparents? Um, Yes. And uh, when I stopped by Friday afternoon already, it was way too early, but they hadn't settled on a name, but uh, I hear that it's Lucas Harrison Drost. And so this, uh, this has been a long-awaited child, and we just rejoice in a healthy birth. A second class, uh, Boonstapel, Friday morning, uh, woke to really severe vertigo, everything spinning around, so he was admitted into Chalmers Hospital. Uh, no tests have shown anything Uh, dramatically different, perhaps it's related to Parkinson's, so he's at Chalmers now for a few days, and then um, we're going to be praying just for wisdom in what place um, is right for him, uh, given his health uh, situation. Uh, Then a note from Josh Horlings. Uh, Those of you who met and know Josh, he was a second lieutenant, is a second lieutenant with the Canadian Army, uh, based here at Gagetown for a while. Uh, He gave the words at our Remembrance uh, Day service. Uh, Just learned uh, early this last week that he pretty suddenly, he kind of knew a transfer was coming, but it was just made very uh, abrupt, really. And so he left uh, Friday morning. He's been transferred to an Army base in Edmonton, Alberta. And he uh, had a chance to just visit with him to say some goodbyes, and he just really expressed appreciation Uh, to our church family for what it's meant to him uh, during this time. Uh, The nice thing for Josh is uh, this is about a 12-hour drive from Smithers, B.C., where he's from and where his fiancée lives, so it'll be a lot closer to see her on occasion and over over Christmas. 
And then a reminder that tonight we are celebrating our special candlelight service. That'll be 7 o'clock here. Um, sometimes it's called a service of lessons and carols because it really goes through the whole salvation story, beginning uh, in Genesis, moving all the way to Jesus' birth, the fulfillment of all of the prophecy. Uh, this has been uh, one of the most cherished services uh, for me over the years, so just encourage you uh, to uh, come and worship the Lord through that service this evening. And then uh, one, one other thing, this uh, series of messages we've been on uh, today and the prior two Sundays, it's God with us. And really the whole drama of how God could be with us happened when Adam and Eve sinned. And instead of seeking out God's company, uh, they hid. So there was the very first message, Adam and Eve. And uh, Ruth said, well, aren't you going to share a little bit of humor of, of, that's kind of related to that? So I'm going to do that. Um, so here, here's how it went. Uh, one day I was uh, returning from the hospital. This is some years back. And I uh, just was on my way past a young family. Uh, I hadn't seen them in a little while, so I just thought impromptu, I'll, I'll stop by and, and say hello. So I, I knocked at the door. And um, you know when you can kind of tell that there's, there's somebody around, but, but nobody answered, nobody came. So, well, too bad. So I pulled out a little note, and, um, and, and I thought, well, I'd get, uh, you know, kind of be a little bit clever. So I, I put on the note, uh, Revelation 3.20, and then just signed my name, left it there at the door. And so if you know Revelation 20, it's where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and visit with them. So... Anyway, week went on, and Sunday follows, and, um, you know, the mom of this uh, family, the family was there, and um, in the greeting line, you know, it's kind of busy, and she just slipped me a little note, and I popped it in my coat pocket in the midst of all the other uh, fellowship going on. But then afterward, I, I pulled it out, and um, on it simply was written Genesis 3, verse 10. I thought, What? So I looked it up, and it's, um, uh, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid uh, because I was naked, so I hid. <laughs> so she was just as clever with scripture as I was trying to be. We have a God who gives us a sense of humor, a God who places important people in our lives, a God who hears our prayers about everything that's important to us. Let's uh, pray together. God, our Father, the Christmas season has been described as the most wonderful time of the year. And we who know the significance of Jesus' birth, it certainly is a joyful time. So thank you for this season with its Christmas carols and Christmas programs and lights and stories and family traditions and special worship services. Open our hearts wide to marvel anew at the gift of your one and only Son. And Father, as we celebrate Jesus' birth, we also thank you for another birth, a healthy boy to Ashley and Pat Drost. And we ask for healing for Ashley after the C-section. And may that baby grow healthy and strong. May he grow to love and worship Jesus as his Savior and Lord. And may this precious child be a source of great joy to Pat and Ashley. And God, our Father, in these weeks there is much going on. Help us to savor every bit of the wonder of Christmas. Bless our students in our area schools in the week ahead before they uh, break for Christmas uh, holidays. Uh, may they apply themselves to their studies, and, but also enjoy the special activities and festivities that are planned. Lord, watch over those traveling to see family in other places, whether Dubai or PEI. Grant them safety and delight in being with loved ones. 
Lord, you deserve our worship totally for your glorious character and for your great gift. And as we feature extra services for these special occasions, please bless our worship planners, bless our musicians, whether keyboard, guitar, drum, or vocalists. Bless those who attend our nursery or lead children's worship or handle the sound system and PowerPoint. May all of our talents be used in worship. Our hearts be open to worshiping the newborn King. Gracious God, it's great to think that next Christmas we may have a new pastor to share this season. A thank you for a fine meeting of our council last Sunday to finalize some key details in our church profile. And now would you please continue to guide our pastor search team as they forge ahead to utilize this profile and search for a, a good pastor to serve with us. Lord, in your love, we ask you to remember our individual needs. Uh, please restore class after a bout of severe vertigo and grant wisdom in what place may be best for his needs now. We remember Josh Horlings, even now as he's driving all the way to Edmonton, Alberta. I thank you for his time with us and for his a real commitment to you and to growing in you and ask that you'd bless him in his new posting and his upcoming marriage this summer. Lord, for those who have had a loved one die in the past year and keenly miss them in this season, grant them comfort. For those dealing with conflict, perhaps in their family, grant reconciliation and harmony. For those who may battle discouragement or depression, be near with your tender care. And Prince of Peace, bring lasting peace on earth in every marriage, every family, every workplace, in every country and land. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let's uh, stand together now to prepare our hearts for God's word uh, to us. Our song of illumination is Spirit of the Living God. Let's stand. Good morning. Um, today's scripture reading can be found in Exodus 3, verses 1 to 12, and 40, verses 3 to 38. And those can be found on pages 46 and 78 in your pew Bibles. First, let us pray. 
Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us all here together to worship you. Help us as we read your word, help us hear your voice and speak to us through it. In your name we pray, amen. Okay. Now Moses was tending the flock of of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was too afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And then chapter 40. Then the cloud covered the tent of of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. So far the reading. Thanks, Josie. And actually, I'll add a a verse. It's been our theme verse through this series in Advent. It's... um, Matthew 1, verse 23, where the angel says, uh, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So just by way of review, for the past uh, two weeks, we've seen that God created humankind in part simply to enjoy being with us. But then sin got in the way. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, and sin is a big barrier to an utterly pure God. And yet in his love, God still longed to be with us. And we saw that with Adam and Eve. Even after they were evicted from the garden, God still came to them and clothed them with garments of skin. We saw that with Abraham last week, that that God made a special covenant with him, full of blessings. And today we see this with uh, Moses, who was a descendant of Abraham. Uh, Let's look at three very different scenes. We uh, read about one of them in, in Moses' life. So the first scene is Moses' birth. You probably remember the story. A pharaoh came to fear that the Israelites were growing too numerous. What if there should be an uprising to throw off their slavery and, and overthrow him? So he ordered that every newborn Hebrew boy be killed, thrown into the Nile River. So it's into this dangerous world that Moses now is born. And, 
And the first three months, his mother courageously hid him, perhaps at the risk of her very life. But then Moses grew larger and presumably louder. And now what? Well, Moses' mother placed him in a basket and uh, had that basket uh, put among the reeds that, that grew ar along the, uh, the River Nile. And then they waited. Uh, Moses' sister kind of waited to see what would happen. And, and along comes, of all people, Pharaoh's daughter to bathe in the river. And she spots the basket. She has an attendant bring it over to her, and inside she finds a baby uh, crying. And her heart went out to this little child. She knew it was a Hebrew boy, but still she brought him home to the, to the palace. She, uh, in effect, adopted him. And so Moses was raised with every privilege in Pharaoh's court. Nowhere in the account does it say uh, even the name of God, but it's plain as can be that God was with Moses had special plans for him. Scene two. Uh, Moses has now grown up and he has made a life-altering choice. He's decided to identify with his biological clan, the Israelites. He's fled uh, Pharaoh's court and now he's, he's out in a remote wilderness area herding sheep of his father-in-law and it's near Mount Horeb, known as the Mountain of God. And, and one day he's herding the sheep and off in the distance he spots a bush that's caught fire. And in a dry environment that happens now and then for different reasons. But this bush never burned up. Kept burning. Strange. And, and, and so he, he goes over to check out this uh, strange phenomenon. And then of all things, God calls to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and then take off your sandals for the place on which you're standing is holy ground. A and this voice identifies himself. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and then he tells Moses his plan about uh, saving his people from slavery in Egypt, and, and God promises to lead them into a land flowing with milk and honey. And then the Lord says, and I will be with you. Scene three. Moses is in the very same locale now, only fast forward in time. Moses has just led God's people out of Egypt after all the signs and wonders through the Red Sea. And now they have traveled through the wilderness to Mount Horeb, also called Mount Sinai. And there God calls Moses up the mountain to meet with him and receive his law. And when Moses comes down, the people saw that his face was radiant. It radiated the divine glory of having God with him. So in all of these three scenes, God is with Moses. Now, let's move forward to one more scene. When God at Mount Sinai gave Moses the Ten Commandments, or his law. It was much more than just the Ten Commandments. Uh, in his various instructions, and it follows chapter after chapter, we, we find that God is a God of order and precise detail. For example, the law is given in Exodus 20, uh, 25. Exodus 25 records that he gave detailed instructions. I mean, really minute instructions about how to construct the tabernacle and how to furnish it. And, um, and the tabernacle, of course, was also called the tent of meeting where God would specially meet with Moses. And then Numbers 2, 
And this is the kind of a wonderful scene I'm leading up to now. In Numbers 2, God gives specific instructions about how the 12 tribes are to pitch uh, their tents when they stop along their journey. Listen to verse 2. The Israelites are to camp around the tent of meeting. So did you catch that? They pitch their tents around the tent of meeting. So the tabernacle, where God's special presence resided, is smack dab in the middle of all these tribes, all the people. And God even gives instructions about where each of the tribes is to pitch their tent, their tents. Uh, to the east, see, let me get my directions here. So we'll see over here, to the east of the tabernacle, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun are to camp. To the south of the tabernacle, Gad, Simeon, Reuben are to camp. To the west of the tabernacle, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin are to camp. And then to the north of the tabernacle, Naphtali, Asher, and Dan are to camp. And the book of Numbers says that all the tribes together uh, numbered over 600,000 people. Think about that. That's, that's basically the population of New Brunswick. And imagine seeing tents spread out as far as the eye can see in every direction around the tabernacle. An amazing sight and smack dab in the middle is the tabernacle where God's presence dwells. And now this is how the whole book of Exodus ends. This is the last uh, reading. The cloud, and that's the cloud of God's presence that led them by day, the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. What a, what a moment where, where the visible sign that God is with them right in the middle of all their tents. And this really is a glimpse of God's original intention in the Garden of Eden, being right there with Adam and Eve, right there with his people. Marvelous picture of the Lord wanting to be with us. But sadly, sin kept getting in the way. Uh, tainted human nature, I uh, hadn't changed one bit. So the Israelites, they proved to be stiff-necked people. Despite all of the signs and wonders God has does, uh, had done, uh, helping them go through the Red Sea, they still don't fully trust God. They, they grumble at, at him. They run after other gods. At one point, it got so bad that God contemplated wiping them all out, just sparing Moses, sort of like he had done with Noah uh, generations before. And so it's the same issue that keeps cropping up. How could our sin allow a pure God to be with us despite his desire to do so? But God didn't give up. And so in the fullness of time, an angel appeared to an ordinary man and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her, it's from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a child, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. He will remove the very barrier, the impediment that God, through all the centuries, has had from being with us. And then the added note, the angel says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So here's the point. Uh, in Jesus, 
God wants to pitch his tent right in the middle of our lives. You know, I, I think of kids, school, and uh, some kids, you know, they're not as sure that uh, their classmates like them very much, invite them to stuff, really want to be with them. And that can really hurt. Uh, but here's the good news. Classmates may not want to, but, but God does. God wants to be with us, everyone. And here's the good news for us, seated here, Christmas season 2017. Uh, we all have an advantage that Moses and those 12 tribes never had. Jesus has been born. Jesus on the cross has saved us from our sins. In Jesus, God has come near to us. Emmanuel, God with us. So do you want to experience God's presence with you? Uh, revering God's law won't do it. Kneeling in prayer five times a day won't do it. Seeking some divine spark deep within you won't do it. You know, I once had somebody come by my study and in talking, he, he made this telling comment, was really struggling. He said, I just don't feel God's presence with me. I just don't feel God's presence with me. And it was troubling and and I thought, in a way, he represents plenty of people. Uh, you know, in a sin-broken world, so many things get between us. We can grope for God. We, we don't always sense his presence. And there is no magic pill to make us feel God's presence with us. But in his love and wisdom, God has made a way. Do you want to experience God's presence and power and love with you, then here's the way. Go to Jesus, born in Bethlehem. Bow before Jesus. Listen to Jesus and his word. Follow Jesus. He and he alone is Emmanuel, God, with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Let's pray together. God, when we read the Old Testament accounts, it's this constant tension back and forth uh, our sin putting you off, but yet you're not giving up. You're persisting. You're wanting, longing to be with us. And, and we thank you that you uh, provided the supreme way for that to happen, to overcome the sort of failure of the Old Testament where sin kept cropping up. Thank you that in your amazing creativity you sent your one and only Son, to be Emmanuel, to be God with us. And Jesus, we thank you uh, that you were born to die, to take our sins on your shoulders, that we would be relieved of them so that we could be with God and God could be with us. And we know there's all kinds of alternatives that the world promises can make us close to some divine sense or being in our lives, but but here we have the gospel message of the Bible, that it's through Jesus. It's through Jesus that we can be with you. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And Lord, it's my prayer that each one of us in this Christmas season would be drawn closer to Jesus, that we wouldn't be distracted by the lights and the songs and the activities, 
but in rereading the Gospels of his birth, the wonder of it, and the prophecy of what he came to do, that all of us in our life together, we'd, we'd come to admire uh, Jesus more deeply and be enthralled with his teaching and his saving work in our lives. And this is our prayer, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. We're going to respond with uh, the song, a familiar uh, Christmas carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Uh, we'll sing stanzas one, three, and four together. Let's uh, stand. great to be together, uh, to share in God's presence with us. I want to invite everyone to enjoy a time of fellowship, uh, get a cup of coffee um, afterward. And uh, again, tonight, 7 o'clock, our special candlelight service. I hope we can all be back for that. And as we go from here to love and serve the Lord, uh, receive his blessing on your life. Brothers and sisters, now may God live at the center of your lives, as he once tented in the middle of the Israelites long ago. May his love and joy and peace shine from your face and from your life in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. <laughs>